Good afternoon. I'm going to make a brief focus on research and technology development, a key activity for us at ENI, both for the present business and for the future. At ENI, we work on a range of technologies around three main drivers. Circular economy for completely sustainable solutions, carbon neutrality, which includes new renewables, such as advanced solar and wave energy, and CO2 transformation in useful products, and operational excellence, aiming at ever improving existing business areas in terms of efficiency, economic and environmental sustainability. We will focus on some of the key technologies under development in the frame of these drivers. Here in the picture you can see a few examples, amongst which the recently launched HPC5 supercomputer, which runs all the proprietary algorithms for exploration and reservoir, and which will be used further for new technologies and the inertial sea wave converter, a way to exploit the largely untapped sea and ocean power. But before we do this, let me give you some information on how we see and value research and technology development. One key point of how we do research and innovation is that we work all together as a team with an integrated and cross-fertilization approach rather than separate innovation models for each of the businesses. The R&D and technology development team is in effect at the centre of the exchange of experience, problem solving and knowledge management of the company, providing experience, solutions, innovation and competences. And talking of competences, we have the capacity to build internally the right teams, labs and assets to support current and future business needs. 1500 people are involved in R&D and over 50 pilot plants are operating, designed and realised by our R&D units. The one you see in the picture is an example, the first pilot of a bio-oil production with a proprietary process. In developing our technologies, we can rely on our seven centres and on a strong network of 70 research centres and universities throughout Italy and at international scale. And now, let's have a look at three different examples of how at any we develop technology. Starting from today, this is a picture of our bio-refinery in Venice. The first example in the world of a conventional refinery transformed in a biorefinery using eco-fining technology, an innovative process developed in-house. There is a second one in Gela, in Sicily. By 2021, ENI is going to have a process capacity of around 1 million tonnes per year of biofuels, such as diesel, LPG and NAFTA. The refinery is operating and development work is now concentrating on advancements. In fact, besides being involved in deploying ecofining in Italy, we are working to bring our technologies in the countries where we operate, promoting the local economy and supporting the company's geographical diversification process. As said before, ecofining is an innovative process able to transform vegetable oils and waste into biodistillates, mainly consisting in diesel oil called HVO, hydrogenated vegetable oil a product with outstanding properties. It doesn't contain polyaromatic compounds and has a significantly higher C10 number when compared to other diesel products, assuring lower pollutant emissions as well as higher combustion efficiency, that is to say, lower CO2 emissions. Nowadays, in line with new EU rules, we are working to accelerate the transition towards alternative feedstocks, even before the EU targets set for 2030. ENI aims to eliminate first-generation vegetable oils in biofuels, replacing them with more sustainable second- and third-generation feedstocks such as algal oil, microbial oils from biomass or other such as castor oil, which can be grown on marginal land in arid areas. Moreover, by promoting a circular economy industrial model, ENI is strongly committed to the use of waste as a source of energy. That's why, today, about 15% of the feedstock for the Venice plant is provided by used cooking oil. And now, second example, which is the development at demonstration scale of a process to recover energy and water from urban and organic waste in a fully circular economy approach. This you see in the picture is a pilot plant in Gela, Sicily, in the refinery area and has now been operating for a full year, treating 16 tons of waste. The waste to fuel technology is a proprietary technology developed internally and protected by many patents. 
The one produced is an advanced bio-oil, according to the latest European Renewable Energy Directive, since it comes from waste biomass, urban waste not in competition with food production and land usage. The bio-oil has very interesting characteristics, such as a high heating value, high stability, very low sulphur content, less than 0.1%, which makes it compatible with the latest marine regulation IMO 2020, which asks for a sulphur content less than 0.5% for marine use. The process reproduces in a few hours what nature did to my biomass in millions of years for producing fossil oil, with milder process conditions compared to other waste treatment processes. Starting from 100 kilograms of, wa of waste, we can produce up to 16 kilograms of bio-oil, which represents up to 80% of the energetic content of the, wa of the waste and water, which makes over 70% of the starting waste and that can be reused for industrial and irrigation purposes. With the information of the pilot, engineering work is underway for industrial application. The first plant will be realized by an annual rewind in Venice and will be up and running by the beginning of 2023. The plant will manage 100 kilotons per year of waste, the quantity produced by about 1.5 million people city like Milan. The amount of bio-oil produced can reach up to 21 kiloton per year, depending on waste characteristics. By 2023, we will start projects to build waste-to-fuel plants uh, with a total treatment capacity of 600,000 tons. To give you a reference, every year in Italy, around 7 million tons of sorted organic waste is produced, with significant costs for management and disposal. To conclude this overview on technology, let's have a look at the future. We believe magnetic fusion could be the real technological breakthrough with the highest potential to respond to the world's increasing demand for clean energy. Fusion power is a form of generation in which energy will be generated by using nuclear fusion reactions to pr produce heat for energy and electricity generation. In a fusion process, two lighter atomic nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus and at the same time they release energy. This is the same process that powers stars like the Sun. Physics of this process is well understood, but to date no operating power plant using this technology still exists. Fusion does not emit greenhouse gases or particulate emissions. The fuel supply is virtually inexhaustible and there's no physical possibility for a meltdown event or runaway nuclear reaction. Now, ENI has been a first mover in this sector, cooperating with MIT from the early stage of the studies, which developed into Commonwealth Fusion Systems, a spin-off working on the first magnetic fusion plant, of which ENI holds a share. CFS will realize an innovative compact reactor with short time to market named ARC, advanced reactor concept. Any participated in parallel R&D projects on plasma physics and fusion fundamentals launched at the MIT Plasma Science and Fusion Center. Moreover, Eni is also contributing to this technology development together with Italian leading scientific partner, the National Research Council and INEA. With the first, there's a joint R&D center launched uh, recently in Sicily on advanced modeling of plasma and materials. And concerning the collaboration with Enea, we entered in a joint venture with Enea and uh, a university consortium uh, in a company called DTT devoted to the construction and test of heat management solutions for full-scale fusion reactors. All these initiatives will ensure any a privileged position in exploiting the technology. So far, we have not included any industrial deployment of these technologies in our plan. Tests are currently ongoing and expected to be completed in the next four to five years, after which we will know how the road to industrialization can be drawn. Thank you very much for your attention.